In the wars of 1835 and 1851 fought between Amakosa and the British, Inkosi Umakwa the prince of the Khakhabe Kosa, was the most successful and resourceful general on either side. In particular, Nkosi Makoma's guerrilla campaign in the Water Kloof region tied up far larger bodies of British troops than those Makoma commanded. The Kosa British War of Mlanjeni, also known as the Eighth Kosa War, consisted of eight battles, and Amakosa won seven of them thanks to the military genius of Nkosi Makoma who resisted British colonialism for 55 years, the longest time of any individual in history. A period which saw them change commanders 22 times and governors 12 times. The war primarily centered on the Amatole Mountains, the Water Kloof, the Krumi Heights, and the Fish River Bush. There were many reasons behind the Eighth Kosa War, an increasing number of European missionaries arrived to create communities of Christian converts, and British appointed magistrates took over more authority from Kosa traditional leaders who were prohibited from imposing cattle fines on their subjects or penalize witchcraft accusations. White settlers also stole land from the Amakhakhabe section of Amakosa in the Yume Valley and at the foot of the Amatole Mountains where the white military veterans' communities of Woburn and Auckland were established. These conflicts contributed to the rise and fame of the Kosa prophet named Mlanjeni, who commanded the slaughter of cattle that were yellowish in color, often associated with white people, and the abandonment of witchcraft. On Christmas Eve morning in 1850, British Colonel George Mackinnon led almost 700 soldiers into the Amatole Mountains under the instructions of Governor Harry Smith to capture the Amakhakhabe leader King Sandile, who had been deposed by Smith for failure to attend a meeting at King Williamstown. Nkosi Magoma ambushed the column in a gorge on the Kiskama River and the British were forced back, having sustained many casualties. As the British troops moved east through the narrow Buma Plas, hundreds of Khakhabe gunmen fired down on them from rocky precipices. McCannon led his men through the ambush and headed south out of the mountains towards Burnhill Mission and Fort White. The next day, Magoma went on the offensive and overwhelmed three British military bases on the Kume River. Magoma then turned his attention to the principal British forts between the Amatole and the Cat River, and Smith found himself trapped in Fort Cox. Somerset led two unsuccessful attempts to rescue Harry Smith, but both were met by determined resistance and beaten back. In September 1851, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Fordyce, commanding officer of the 74th Highlanders, responded to Kosa cattle raids by taking a punitive expedition of 250 British regulars 250 Fengu and about 150 settler and Khoi Khoi volunteers up to the water kloof. On the open summit, this force was engaged in a brief skirmish by the rebels, who then withdrew into the forested ravines. Since his men had little food, Fordyce decided to return to Fort Bayford and led his force down a particularly narrow forest path on which they were ambushed by Magoma's fighters. When Fordyce's Mfengu rearguard panicked and ran down the path, causing confusion among the Highlanders, the ambushes charged, killing eight soldiers and wounding another nine before running back into the forest. 
Ford Ice led another force into the water kloof in mid-October 1851 that included two Mfengu levies of several hundred men each and by early November, during another unsuccessful sweep of the water kloof, Ford Ice was killed by a rebel Khoikhoi sniper. Ngosi Magoma continued to resist from the water kloof highlands north of Fort Bayford between the Cat River in the east and the Kuonkop River in the west. An area of just 60 square miles, the terrain was even more impassable for British troops than the Amatol. Here, with just a few hundred warriors, Magoma fought off repeated attempts by Smith to dislodge him and he could use this location to raid nearby settler farms. The height of Magoma's success was when he ambushed and beat back two British columns, led by Somerset and Lieutenant Colonel Fordes respectively. In January 1852, the frustrated colonial office replaced Terry Smith with Sir George Cathcart. In June, Cathcart planned to extricate the rebels from the water clue for the large force of 1,200 British regulars and 450 Mfengu. As a new strategy, his forces built a series of small fortified posts on the water kloof highlands to serve as patrol bases for searching the forested ravines and to deny the rebels high ground for observation. Colonial sweeps of the water kloof continued with one in September involving 3,000 British soldiers, Cape Mounted Riflemen and Mfengu. Finding his position untenable, Magoma began withdrawing his people to the Amatol and by the middle of October, Cathcart reported that the water kloof was secure. Throughout October and November 1852, colonial patrols burned crops and seized cattle and many Khakhabe fled east of the Kai River. King Sandile crossed the Kai in January 1853, and Prince Magoma, who had remained in the Amatole with only 40 followers, joined him in mid-February. And both traditional leaders sent a message to the colonial officials that they wished to surrender. The colonial squashed earth campaign destroyed Khakhabe food sources and starved them into submission. The War of Mlanjeni represented the second largest ever war fought within South Africa and for more than 18 months the small Tosa Khoikhoi force estimated by some colonists to number no more than 200 fighting men at any one time defied more than 4,000 of the British Army's finest troops. For a large part of the war, Ngozi Magoma had completely outmaneuvered the British, repeatedly enticing them into ambushes, and his skill as a military leader has remained a feature in Kosa oral history ever since. <laughs>